as a reminder, we trained an AI model on data from test one and used it to predict the outcome of test two. In this demonstration, we happen to have the results of test two available to validate our model in the validation plot. But in the real world, we won't have those results from test two available. We will just know the conditions that we want to set for test two to perform it. And that's because these conditions are set at the test engineer's discretion when they perform their test planning. So the test engineers decide what conditions test two should be run at according to their test planning. Now, we look at the validation plot, which we can see here. As you can see, the model from test one in red, the red line, is good at predicting test two, the white dots, but it loses accuracy at the sort of higher current densities around here, or about 1,500 amperes per centimeter squared upwards. This is easy to see in our demonstration because we have the results for test two, the white dots, available for comparison. But in the real world, we wouldn't have the test two results, the white dots available to compare. How would we know in advance that the model in red from test one is less accurate at predicting test two in this region? Well, the next test recommender, or NTR for short, answers this for us. It assesses our model trained on test one and tells us where it is least trustworthy. It then recommends additional data points in our design space to add to the training data of the model to surgically increase the trustworthiness of the model in those regions. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'll scroll down. Here we have the next test recommender. Here I gave the next test recommender the conditions for test two. As a reminder, the test engineer would know the conditions in advance because they set these themselves. Even if they don't have the results for test two in advance, they will know the conditions for test two in advance. Now the NTR gave each set of conditions a ranking for how much it would help to improve the trustworthiness of the model. A high ranking means that the model, which we've trained on test one to predict test two, a high ranking tells us that the model from test one is less trustworthy in this region of test two. And as you can see, the ranking relatively increases over the current densities, and it's particularly high here. And you can see the axes are aligned. We begin to get less confidence in our model because of the high value of this relative impact factor compared to these areas where the relative confidence in our model is uh, is higher because the ranking is lower. So low ranking, high confidence, high ranking, low confidence, and it predicted up that in advance for us here from about 1,500 uh, ampere per centimeter squared upwards. As test engineers, we could then have chosen to just perform test two just for these points surgically to improve the accuracy of our model to make this, this curve match the white dots more closely. But we could have just relied on the model in, in red for the other remaining points up here, which were also lower ranked and therefore more trustworthy. And that would have still saved us generating these points in our testing. We would have just performed the testing for these areas.